All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to talk about how we're going to optimize this one website here by optimizing the top page that performed yesterday. And it might not be yesterday, it could be today. It's whatever is in your most recent date in your Google Search Console. And then we're just going to go down here, go to your pages. Once you find the page that has the most clicks or impressions, you click it and it will filter it right here. And then you will get the list of keywords that you're going to work with, or in this case, I'm going to work with. So for this one, we see that we're definitely going to be doing a post about um, a Japanese type of spa or barber or some kind of health and beauty service. But at the way that we're going to go, based on reading these things, I'm most definitely going to be creating a type of content for a hair salon for this one. So we're just going to export this out, and then we're going to via SEO tools that wordsmithagency.xyz.com and we're going to import this there just to see what we're working with fully or if this could be clustered better. Now here we are at SEO tools wordsmithagency.xyz and this is um, a free section of our website where you can access these two tools down here and the one we're going to use today is keyword grouper. The reason why we want to use Keyword Grouper is once we pasted our list of keywords that we saw or had in Google Search Console, we want to be able to cluster them as best we can. This means that we either group on a similar word, a similar phrase, or a theme, depending on how you organize your content. So in this case, we see that the tool grouped it by Japanese and then Asian. I can see why because this is really specific to a Japanese type service. And this is more of a more general service that people are looking for in an area. So in this case, we will create two posts about this and then interlink the two new posts that we create with these keywords back over to the main one that we exported these keywords from. And then that's how we're going to interlink and create this topical relevance on our website. And this is what's going to allow Google to quickly index and provide data for maybe tomorrow, if we're lucky, or most definitely, or I won't say most definitely, more likely next week. And then we can work on the new keywords and create new pages and repeat the same thing. And you're going to see your list of keywords grow and grow if you are working on the same um, page. But if you're working on a broader one, then your website is going to grow just wider, but slowly as it grows uh, more vertical or taller depending on how your niche silo goes but if you're working on a small website with only one service just keep repeating this on the service and you're going to see the traffic grow day by day week by week and then month by month and now we're going to move forward and we're going to create a post based on these clusters so i'll see you in the back end of the website all right guys so we're finally back at um, the site where we're going to post the article we see here that I did have the complete article here ready to go already. And I'm just going to go through exactly what's going on here. So we have a unique site title. This is what's going to be in the header section of your meta description in the uh, title bracket in the HTML code. This should always be different from your H1 just because we want some relevance in here. We don't want to waste something that's in the site title and then waste it by copy and pasting that into the H1. Both of these can be used better by having a unique one there to drive more relevance to your page and give it just a little extra push, which every website could use more of. Then we got a feature, an opening image here that is going to set the tone for the rest of the article. This is because in here we have an alt tag that prescribes this image with as many keywords as possible without spamming. The reason why is that we go about this is because for disability or accessibility reasons, when somebody that can't see comes onto your website, they have to use a code reader, which then goes through the code of your page and transcribes it and reads it out to the your viewer or your listener in this case. So this image here is going to be properly described with as many keywords as possible without ruining its integrity. Then we go into the opening post. And here, if we did not force this into 
our meta description, Google usually would take the opening paragraph here or just a random paragraph within your site or even on the occasional, it was just going to come up with its own one. When it does this, there's nothing much you can do. The best you can do is just try to optimize your opening paragraph as best you can because that's most likely what Google is going to do if it doesn't take the one that you write in your meta description behind in the uh, HTML code. Here, we're going to have one interlink to our homepage for just a general general keyword, just to bring more relevance to the homepage, which um, should be the strongest page on your site. And then from here, it's going to bring all, drive all that relevance throughout your entire site as it trickles downwards. Then we have another link to just another inner page, just to bring in more relevance and powering up another part of our website to help drive relevance from that part. Just because the more pages a link has to travel, the weaker it gets. So keep that in mind as you're setting up your interlinks. Next, we got our H2s. If you remember our keywords in the previous section, these, those would have been our supporting keywords. And we wanted to put those in our H2 because these, once um, you're using your title and H1, the H2 becomes the next powerful thing. And then the H3 and so forth and so on. So this is why we want to put our supporting um, keywords in the H2s as best we can. We don't want to ruin the readability of it because we still want the reader to seamlessly go through your, your blog post. It should still convert to a type of metric being tracked. Even if it isn't directly a lead, it should at least be a share, maybe an email subscription. Every blog post shouldn't go to waste because it has a chance of converting something. So you see, we just repeated the same things here. We use a supporting um, a supporting keyword in the H2, and then we use some loosely related keywords in the, in the paragraph just to bring more topical relevance as Google goes through it and for the reader to have a better understanding of the service that they're looking for or the product they're looking for or whatever it is, the search intent behind the keyword that you're optimizing for. And of course, we end things off with an FAQ. I know Google is changing things on the FAQ, but the change isn't here yet. And we never know if Google has to revert things, but we all know that the FAQ is definitely not going to be gone for good. It may not be as well used as it was before, but we still want to use it because it does really help the reader. Sometimes there are general questions that you, you should be answering behind your search intent. It is just not, it's not always about SEO is all it's always about the user actually and when you focus on the user your SEO usually performs better because you have more metrics for Google to analyze and to rank your content versus the top 10 and then the top five and then once you content gets into the top three it needs to perform and answer the search intent behind the keywords or else you're never going to stay within the top three of your of your search keyword that you're optimizing for so then we're going to end things off at the bottom here with one more conclusion and then another link to the inner page that we do want to optimize towards back at the early beginnings of this video when we were back in Google Search Console. This is usually where I put that URL that I do want to push because I do want to put more relevance towards more important pages at the top of my page. And then at the bottom, that's usually where my weaker links go. But I do want to spread it out regardless, just to keep it more natural in a blog post. It's really weird to have link after link after link. It's, it looks weird and they might blend together. So they might think they just click one link when there's actually three links there for them to click. But yeah, this is pretty much it for this week's video. You see that I actually do go through these processes day after day, week after week, but the nuances change. But as long as your Google Search Console is growing, then you know that your strategy is working. And then you know which pages to double down on, especially once you look into your Google Analytics and see what's moving the revenue side of the website. But yeah, we'll dive deeper into that in a future video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you at the next one.